Well, my experience was very mundane. I, I thank God, was not precocious, and I did what they told me. I went twice a week, which was half an hour each time. And uh, heaven knows what those, you know, I was so worried about him at that time, what, what was going on in mine. I'm sure that I, I yelled and sang a little and all that, but all I remember is the terror I felt of what was happening with him. But I knew that I was getting better, that I was the terror of that, but in, within myself, I was not feeling fear, I was feeling grace. So you couldn't have torn me away from it. And uh, it was very difficult, but I was convinced that this was a spiritual movement that was wonderful, and that somehow I thought God would make him what he was before, the man I loved before. After about 17 years, <clears throat> of being with my husband who was in and out of hospitals while I seemed to have a serenity that uh, grew and grew also I was uh, by then teaching school and loving it just loving working with the students and the uh, they sent a wave of love toward me and I'd send a wave back. It was the love affair. And I went to a week with one friend and a week with one relative and a week here. And I, I got through it because I knew I was going to Indonesia. I had to see Bapak and find out if I was doing the right thing. And um, I think they'd heard about me. By the time I got over there, that wonderful house where the women stayed, I had a solo room. That was very rare. Everybody else had a room. <laughs> but they heard my state, and I think they knew, they knew I needed a lot of peace. So I stayed there for, I don't know, weeks. And finally, toward the end, I saw Bapak's daughter, Rahayu, to talk with her. And Bob Pocket, they had a, another level where the dining room table was, was sat behind her. And I always felt in a way he was inwardly helping her because she said just the right thing to me. He said, uh, in so many words, she said, you don't have to live through this anymore. You've done what you could. And uh, so I knew I was free. And uh, I never looked back. Then an amazing thing happened. And there was Alan Gooding uh, having a Coke leaning against the kiosk. And I just went by, and he, as I passed him, he thought, that's Phyllis Love. And he ran after me. And he says, I didn't even look at him. I snubbed him. He said, pardon me, aren't you a Phyllis Love? And I said, uh, yes. And I just kept going. I thought, oh, somebody saw me in that rerun TV show last week, you know. And uh, he ran after me again. He said, but pardon me. I, I think maybe I know you. Aren't you Phyllis Love? And, uh, and I turned and looked at him. And I recognized him. He didn't look the way he did. I mean, he was an Adonis when he was young, the most perfect body I ever saw. And now he was a middle-aged man. And um, But I recognized him mostly because of the voice. He always had a hoarse, sexy voice, which I loved. <laughs> and um, I said, Alan! And um, he, he said, uh, well, um, uh, how's, uh, how's McGee? I said, oh, that's, that's so sad. Uh, we divorced. Oh, he said. I said, well, what about you? You must have a lot of kids at home now. I thought he was still married to his first wife. 
who was a lovely, beautiful girl. I said, well, you and your wife must have a passel of kids by now. And he said, no, he said, uh, I'm not married, but I have, a, I have a four ch children. <laughs> and I said, you do? And then he swears, I looked at him and said, well, let's go over and have a drink at the Hungry Tiger next door. You feel like a lemonade? <laughs> and actually, the magic started right there. So we talked on the phone every night and carried on a heavy flirtation. <laughs> um, one night, after I hung up on him, I thought, who is he really? He's brilliant and charming, and so was my first husband. Um, but fortunately, in Subu, we have a technique where we can sometimes ask a question and get some guidance from, from our inner. And um, so I said, who is, who is Alan Gooding really? And my mouth opened, that's the way I received guys, my mouth opened and talked to me. My mouth opened and said, um, Alan is your true friend. Alan is your God's soul. Well, what could be better than that? So the romance went very fast from there on. And um, we decided to marry the day after his birthday, which is months after mine. I'm the 21st of December, and he's the 21st of January. As a kid, I never went around saying I'm going to be an actress when I was little. I'm going to have four children. <laughs> I love children. And that I was able to marry the man of my dreams and get these four beautiful, bright children. I just, I felt that God had forgiven me my sins, whatever they were, and all that they were, and given me a great gift. And um, I felt that way every day in this 20-year marriage. I've never not felt it. He and I are on the same wavelength on practically everything. I guess it's because in a way we're, we're a lot alike, too. But also, where I am sometimes flighty and imaginative and fearful, he is real. I need him for my strong, sane base. And he is a, a lawyer and he goes for the actual truth of what we're talking about. And it's, it's a godsend to me. Mm -hmm.